Saturn theory. The Saturn theory from the Velikovsky Encyclopedia. Since we're doing a synopsis, we'll do one on this too. The Saturn theory. Saturn model, Saturn myth, Saturn configuration is the idea based on comparative mythology that the Earth was once in closer proximity or even a satellite of the planet Saturn, which appeared like a sun. It has received criticism on both mythological and physical grounds. Of course. Saturn theory characteristics. Sun-like Saturn and Nova-like. A number of researchers have suggested that in mythology, Saturn is sometimes referred to as a night sun and having gone through a Nova-like phase. 1944, C.E.R. Bruce wrote, in fact, that both Jupiter and Saturn were at one time minor stars. Their satellite systems were formed as the result of minor or planetary nova outbursts. 1973, William Mullen wrote, Velikovsky has suggested that as a result of disruption, Saturn went through a short nova-like phase in which its light would have obscured everything else visible from Earth. 1975, Louis M. Greenberg and Warner B. Sizemore wrote, the planet Saturn was designated as Shamash, or Sun, by the Astro-Babylonian astrologers. And as far back as 1910, M. Jastrow, Physiology, Volume 70, P. 171, proposed the idea that Saturn was a steady or permanent mock sun, performing the same function of furnishing light at Samas. The sun performed during the day. Furthermore, there is undeniable evidence that the concept of night sun as well as a day sun existed in ancient Babylonian astrological thought. 1977, Dordu Cordona wrote, Diodorus Siculus was not the only writer of antiquity who stated that the Babylonians called Saturn the sun star. Hygienus also expressed his opinion that Saturn was called the star of the sun. Among modern Assyriologists, oh, they got Assyriologists too? Assyriologists. I wonder if they're as good as the Egyptologists. Well, I wouldn't know. It seems as if Thompson was one of the first to notice that the Babylonians designated the planet Saturn as Shamash. Yet, Shamash, as a cursory glance through any work on Assyrio-Babylonian mythology will show, was very much like the Egyptian Ra, the usual Babylonian name for the sun. 1979, Emanuel Velikovsky wrote, My conclusion that, as a result of its interplay with Jupiter, Saturn became a nova. I found confirmed in many ancient sources in which Saturn is regularly associated with brilliant light. But I was led to this idea, first of all, by a certain clue contained in the biblical account of the deluge. It's interesting that uh, uh, the Oppenheimer Ranch Project that Dave was talking about the cataclysm 42,000 years ago, I think. I'm wondering th these different steps that it went through. There's evidence of it happening and that is really interesting but the time periods are really hard to nail for me uh the last episode was what we went through with venus and mars that's all i really know for sure and that was within historical times according to velikovsky Earth as a satellite of Saturn. Several authors have independently suggested that mythological sources in ancient texts lead to the conclusion that Earth was once a moon of the planet Saturn. And also we have actual tilts, the oxygen content matching up, the salt water. I don't know how much that matches up or if they have discovered a match in that yet, but as of right now we have two out of three. I wouldn't be surprised if it did. Oh, wait a minute. No, it's three out of three. The water in Saturn's rings and satellites is like that on Earth. Developing a new method for measuring isotopic ratios of water and carbon dioxide remotely, scientists have found that the water in Saturn's rings and satellite is unexpectedly like the water on Earth. How about that? It's three for three. What more did they need? The thing here says, as surprising as this connection between Saturn and Earth is for planetary scientists, the connection was in fact explicitly predicted by one of the great scientific heretics of the 20th century, nearly three quarters of a century ago, Dr. Emanuel Velikovsky. The textbooks, they, they hide a part of history. In one of the oldest texts that the Egyptians have, I believe it's the Ipperware Papyrus, or perhaps it's the Coffin Text. Osiris is already dead, and that dates back to, allegedly, the Old Kingdom. But I think it's a lot older than people think. There were people there, I don't know if it was Egyptian, but a lot older than that. 
Dordo Cordona again, independent of Velikovsky, but basing their work on his, Harold Tressman and Bernard Mugrosh, writer under the name of Brendan Ogiogin, also came to the conclusion that Earth must have once been a satellite of Saturn. B. Ogiogin. What a name. A topic to which Tressman has more recently returned, combining Velikovsky's postulate with that of David Talbot and others, Frederick Hall embraced the same idea, presenting it in a speculative scenario concerning the history of the solar system. Well, I'd like to see that. There never is very much on YouTube about Saturn theory. Not much. A little bit, but not much. Alfred D. Gazia notes, I bought his book, by the way, the year 1977 marked the beginning of quantivolutionary publications about Saturn. Three articles appeared written by David Talbot and by Eduardo Cordona, and jointly by Harold Tressman and B. O. Giogan. A few months later, Velikovsky, who had inspired the studies in each case without participating in them, released a fragment of his manuscripts on Saturn. Saturn was a second sun shining by day and night upon Earth. For example, Oscar Eichenbach is recalled by Woody Cardona. Actually, a similar, if more bizarre, idea that proposes the Earth to be an offspring of Saturn was aired as long ago as 1884 by Oscar Reichenbach as part of a theory purporting to prove that land masses on Earth have rifted and moved northward. Thus, as wrong as he might have been, and I am not here concerned with defending Reichenbach, his ideas preceded the similar ones of Alfred Wegener. They hide a part of history. By some 33 years. 1974, Lynn E. Rose writes, Still others may suppose that pre-flood year was indeed the period of Earth's revolution, but Earth was revolving around some other body other than the Sun. 1977, Harold Tressman and uh, Bernard Nugrosh, writing as B.O. Giogan, wrote, What must have been the relationship between Earth and this great body, proto-Saturn? There are two answers we consider. The first is that the Earth was indeed nearer to this body, but on an orbit about the Sun independent of the great body. Thus, there would be times when the aspect of the proto-Saturn body would be large. However, there would also be times when its aspect would be quite small. As at present, neither does this explanation account for some of the satellitic descriptions. The alternative proposal is startling. It is that at one time, the Earth orbited as a satellite of proto-Saturn. 1977 again, Ralph E. Jurgens wrote, Velikovsky has stated that Saturn was disrupted in a near collision with Jupiter. Knowing little or nothing of the details, I can most easily imagine such an encounter in terms of a Saturnian planetary system, which included Earth, being invaded, dismembered, and captured by an interloping system of relative giants consisting essentially of the present Sun and Jupiter. If nothing else, the actual inclinations of Jupiter and its offspring, Venus, argue for an ancestral relationship between Jupiter and the Sun. Now, even though Velikovsky points out that Saturn was once a much more massive body than it is today, it is hard to imagine that it could have been massive enough to be a star in the context of the thermonuclear theory of stellar in energy. But we know that's wrong. If, however, it is an electrically fueled star, its initial stellar state and its sudden demise seem readily explainable. In 1978, Cordona wrote, It is also possible that the planet Saturn was much closer to Earth than it is at present, or that the Earth itself was on an entirely different orbit and at a different distance from the Sun than it is now. They hide a part of history. In fact, we have good reason to believe that during the period of Earth history with which we are concerned, our little world was actually a satellite held in the electromagnetic and or gravitational embrace of the giant planet. In 79, Velikovsky wrote, it is conceivable that the Earth was, at that time, a satellite of Saturn, afterwards possibly becoming a satellite of Jupiter. Yep. And 79, Len E. Rose writes, Velikovsky has suggested that many thousands of years ago, but still within human memory, Earth might have been a satellite of Saturn. We are now supposing that the central fire was Saturn, that Earth was in orbit around Saturn, and always kept the same face towards Saturn and that Saturn with Earth revolved around the Sun in one year. Day and night would be solar phenomena, but caused by the revolution of Earth around Saturn. Even at night, Saturn would provide illumination to the part of Earth that always faced Saturn. 1980, David Talbot wrote in his book, The Saturn Myth, 
Saturn did not move on its present remote orbit, but ruled as the central sun around which the other heavenly bodies visually revolved. 1984, David Talbot and E.V. Cochran wrote, It is understood that Velikovsky believed the Earth and Saturn to have once moved in close proximity, with the Earth perhaps revolving as a Saturnian moon. The Saturn myth proposes that Saturn, fixed at the celestial pole, loomed massively overhead, a central sun venerated by all mankind. Evidence is presented there for a Saturnian polar configuration as the source of civilization's early dominant symbols. They hide a part of history. Talking about the fleur-de-lis, Dave was telling me that it's one of the oldest symbols on Earth. That's quite of an intricate design to be one of the oldest. But again, much like the buildings, the older seems the better the more intricate, kind of be in line with everything else that we see. Now we have some different configurations. One of them is barbell model from Cordona, and there are criticisms. One thing that uh, I know is the last god that was added to the to the Greek gods was Apollo, and he is, all the other Greek gods are old men with beards. He is a young man and clean shaven, and uh, if he's identifying with the sun, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Now, I don't know about this one Super Saturn idea. It's worth exploring. That's uh, Solaria Benaria. So this is, I got this book, actually. This is from, uh, this is from our friend, Alfred de Grazia. Writers as David Talbot and Dorio Cordona and others have put several diversion versions of planetary reconstruction myth in which Saturn is situated at the Earth's north celestial There's evidence. The latter seems quite preposterously at odds with gravitation. Well, there the reporter is uh, he's showing his slip. Which would not allow Saturn and the rotational pole of Earth to remain immobile with respect to each other. Hmm. Rose has criticized the collinear model. I mean, we have to use that as a barometer to everything. What if that's wrong? Other Saturn theories have Earth's north rotational pole pointed at Mars, with Venus, Saturn, and Jupiter lined up directly behind Mars. Several variants of this have been proposed over the years. Okay, notably by Frederick Joanneman, David Talbot, Tordu Cordona, and E.V. Cochran. That wasn't so bad. The last two of whom will be speaking tomorrow, as will Walt Thornhill, who along with Robert Driscoll and Emilio Spedicato, Robert Grabo, have given support to the theory from the technical side. I have several criticisms of this kind of Saturn theory. The key issue for me, nomenclature, say that ten times, Nomen nomenclature. <laughs> Stability, myth, and transference. I regret to say that there is a similar behavior in the field of Saturnian studies. The Saturn theory becomes whatever their theory is, and it excludes me. Well, at least he's honest. Even words like polar and actual are co-opted, as if those words characterize their theory, but not mine. Thus, the so-called Saturn theory, to this day, Philelus theory, is a stationary Saturn theory, and a pole theory, and a world mountain theory, and an axis Monday theory. So I cannot accept any names for the Saturn theory that utilize such words as those. Some have called it the abacus theory, or abacus, I see that, which I could accept, but that has not caught on. Well, they think you're relating it to the god Bacchus. I once suggested the name Northernism. Well, I like that, you know, but that doesn't really have any kind of, uh, you can't gain insight from looking at it. Northernism. I know what it means, the polar alignment. Since Earth's North Pole points at Mars, Venus, Saturn, and Jupiter. But that has not caught on either. Nine. I would now like to propose the name God Kebab. Oh, yeah. Make it sound silly. No. For this overcrowded column of deities, 
but the defenders of the theory probably won't like that any more than northernism. Victor Slabinski, an astronomer in the aerodynamics section at Intelsat in Washington, D.C., who works on orbital mechanics of geostationary communication satellites, criticized Robert Grabau's, Grabau's polar configuration PC model and concluded that his paper gives insufficient mathematical analysis. Our results here show that, that Grubau's PC is untenable. On Spedicato's model, Cordona notes that the results from the equations involved did not confirm the required sustained dynamical stability of the model. On the contrary, it was found that the stability of such an axially aligned system would be lost rather fast, with its maximum duration corresponding to only about three months when it's expected stability should extend at least over several thousand years. And the bibliography, Belikovsky, Saturn in the Flood in the Beginning, I read that, that's in my playlist. E.B. Cochran, The Saturn Myth, online maverick science. We'll have to check that out. I, I like E.B., he's good. Dordu Cordona, The Road to Saturn. Have to check that out on Eon, Eon Journal. Trushman Herald in... Uh, Okay. And B. O. Geogen, 1977, The Primordial Lights, online at Harold Treshman's website, and Alfred de Grazia, Earl Milton, Golden Age and Nova of Super Saturn. All right. That'll do it. It says here that uh, Osiris is associated with the Jed Pillar, and that reminds me of Tesla Tower. You would think, with all of this evidence that they have, you would think that somebody from mainstream would at least look at the evidence and the arguments. They don't even bat an eye. How could they ever get an answer right with an attitude like that? I suppose eventually, after they trip over it 7,000 times, they'll have no choice but to pick it up. And there's a story that intrigues me about the, the Scythians who came from the north and they called them Saturn people. I want to know more about that. Something intrigues my intuition about that. I just don't, I can't put, I don't know what it is yet. For me, there's a ring of truth to this whole thing. I, I don't know if you can feel it or not, but I know you can't go on feelings and intuition, but it just feels right. And all the evidence leans in that direction. Since I've discovered this, I have not seen one thing that goes against it. Yeah, in fact, it just makes it seem even more obvious. Stick it in and break it off, don't they? Yes, they do. So, to recap the progress, is Saturn was a free-floating brown dwarf star. Uh, this is about Saturn theory. So they're running along. The uh, Earth is basically in the tail of the comet, but somehow instead of uh, everything getting all to, to destroying planets flying into stars and stuff like that the sun's electrical field pretty much took care of the whole thing and first treated it like a comet and it came in and they had to go and walk about for a while as they say and uh, they the sun sorted it out one planet at a time and in that period was the polar configuration that was during that period and here are some of the things that point to a Saturn theory as being the answer in an electric universe. Number one, Herbie Harrow objects. Number two, lush vegetation at the North Pole that supports the polar configuration. There's evidence of lush vegetation at the North Pole. Three, the North Pole is magnetized. Four, planets are gods of myth. Five, the myths are the same story worldwide, basically. They have the same characters. Six, the circle of ice in the Ice Age. During the Ice Age, a circle of ice existed. This is why Siberia had mild weather. Could have been tropical. Number seven, the ubiquitous symbols all over the world. And number eight, the worldwide catastrophe recorded by every civilization. Those are eight. And of course, you can add to that the axle tilts, the oxygen, and the sea water. That's, uh, that's 11 huge things to put on its side. And as of 
As of yet, I haven't been able to find one thing to put on the other side. If this was a court case, do you think the uh, verdict? And the Earth is Saturn's baby, so to speak, from a prior flare, obviously. This is how the planets or star or whatever you want to call them operate. They operate just like galaxies. They have their young, or just like people. They have their young and do their swinging from chandeliers, have their babies and do their fast living, and then they settle down to live a life. The stars that are under a lot of stress burn brighter and are more apt to blow up. Fortunately, we have a stable in that regard. The sun was receiving much more current at the time, and Saturn basically short-circuited. It blew a fuse and Nova. It didn't destroy the planet. It didn't destroy the star. It damn near did. Don't they say that Saturn has no guts? It could uh, float in a bathtub? Not only that, but at 23 centimeters, it's 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The core of Saturn is supposed to be 11,500 degrees. I'm trying to remember if that's Fahrenheit or Celsius. But I'm going to say Fahrenheit. It could be hot. hotter than the surface of. It. There's even mentioned by Velikovsky in Worlds in Collision that vegetation has been detected in Saturn's rings. And still, to this day, it puts out more energy than it receives from the sun. Simulation does is that it allows you to model the plasma, regardless of size, put in the uh, a rather few uh, basic uh, initial equations, and then and then follow the simulation through its various nonlinear stages uh, and the different morphologies or, or shapes that the uh, plasma will take. In uh, Tony Peratt simulations, as the current spirals into the center of the galaxy, turns around and moves out along the axis of the galaxy. In that central area where the current is extremely concentrated, there seemed again the potential for violent events. And Alphane and, and uh, Peratt raised the question, couldn't this be a way of explaining the extremely violent events that occur in the center of galaxies? that are known as quasars, in which huge amounts of energy are released in what, by astronomical terms, is a relatively small amount of time. That is, millions of years compared with the billions of years galaxies exist. Initially, the time frames shown uh, represent a billion years or so, but now we're gonna, going to carry it out for 10 billion years to see what happens to these uh, double radio galaxies or quasars as the uh, two filaments have evolved into. And you'll see that the tails start to elongate and uh, fairly soon you're going to start to see a uh, spiral structure. And uh, as we get closer to 10 billion years, the end of the uh, movie, uh, you will see that we have formed the uh, shape, the morphology, the shape of a spiral galaxy.